How to tolerate topical retinoids and minimize irritation is one of the most commonly asked questions on my Instagram as a board certified dermatologist. I want to share with you some tips and tricks I give to my patients when they are starting off with retinoids, whether prescription or over the counter, as well as some of my favorite products that I recommend using along with topical retinoids to reduce irritation. So topical retinoids is really one of the holy grail products that dermatologists love recommending or prescribing for so many different things but in particular for reducing the appearance of skin aging, fine lines, wrinkles, not even skin texture, skin tone, as well as to help with acne, as well as acne associated hyperpigmentation. One of the main downsides to topical retinoids, especially the prescription ones, like for example, tretinoin, is their irritation. Whether you're using a retinoid prescription or over the counter, irritation is definitely something that you probably will experience. More dry skin, dehydration, hydrated skin and for some individuals it can be extreme to the point where their skin is burning whether they have products on or burning that's exacerbated with addition of other products redness flaking and peeling of skin these symptoms can be super uncomfortable where it really deters people from using retinoids regularly and if you're not using it regularly then you're really getting the least amount of benefits from it so how to minimize irritation first my recommendation is to pick the topical retinoid formulation for your concern for example, if you are purely wanting to improve on even skin texture, skin tone for skin aging purposes, then go with a milder form of over-the-counter retinol, retinol to hide, because a lot of the times they're going to be less irritating and you're able to use it more regularly. Furthermore, if you do have more mature skin, your skin is slightly more dry at baseline and so often less tolerant of using a prescription retinoid. If you are battling acne, then definitely prescription retinoids is really going to be the most effective. And if you're kind of having acne as well as wanting to improve signs of aging, then I do think that going with a prescription is going to give you the most benefit. And this is where going with the lowest strength of prescription retinoid to start is going to be really, really important. Two, slowly ease your way into it. You only want to use it maybe a few times a week, like once or twice a week, and do that for a few weeks. Gradually add on a night or two per week. Check to see how your skin is doing. If it's not super dry or flaky, then slowly increase a night or two every few weeks until you're able to use it every single night. Now, you definitely don't need to use it every single night to get the benefits. Studies have shown that for a lot of the anti-aging benefits, even three to four days every every week can be helpful. For acne, obviously, the more you're able to tolerate and use regularly, the better it is gonna be for your acne. But it's a balance, right? It's a balance between irritation, because irritation does not help with your skin, nor does it help with you reaching your skincare goals, right? With the, the frequency and the efficacy of regular use with your retinoid. So it's a balance, guys. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want to stop all of your other active ingredients, products, in your skincare routine when you are starting with a topical retinoid and really just keep it simple with cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. You know, I even get asked, can I use a hydrating serum? I can't never answer that fully because I don't know what your skin is like, what type of serum you're using, the ingredients in that serum. So in general, I just recommend to remove everything. If you want to test it out, by all means try, but it's one of those things where I can't answer for you. You just have to try yourself and figure out whether that works well for your skin when you're using a topical retinoid. And once your skin adjusts to the topical retinoid, you can slowly add in your other products one at a time gradually, maybe over the span of a week or two. And then it comes to down to picking the right moisturizer to use with your topical retinoid because when it comes to using retinoids, moisturizers are really gonna be key and essential to allow you to continue using your topical retinoid and minimizing irritation and really increasing the tolerability of the retinoid. So this is where it's more a personal choice and preference. Just pick a moisturizer that you like that works well for your skin. I personally feel that when you are using a topical retinoid, at least when you're first starting off, you want to pick thicker moisturizers because these are going to contain more emollients and inclusives like petrolatum, shea butter, fatty acids. That is going to be more helpful at preventing transepidermal water loss and minimizing dryness 
softness and flaking compared to say a gel moisturizer or a gel cream moisturizer that's gonna have more humectants but not as effective at preventing water escaping through your skin. Because what we're really trying to achieve is minimizing that transepidermal water loss with a thicker moisturizer that is you know induced by topical retinoids. Now, one of the most commonly asked questions I get too is, oh, should I be using it on dry skin, damp skin? But if I use it on dry skin, my skin gets dry. Should I be moisturizing in between? How long should I be waiting between my moisturizer and my layer of tretinoin? Really guys, it doesn't really matter. Just find one that works well for you, for your routine, for your time. Because you really don't want to be spending 30 minutes putting out your topical retinoid. The easiest way is cleanse your skin, pat it dry, you know, wait for a minute or two so that way it's not damp. Dot your retinoids all over, gently spread it evenly across your face, and then right away immediately follow that with a thicker moisturizer. The reverse way is that if you really don't like waiting for your skin to dry and you feel like your skin gets pretty dry and just doesn't feel like it's getting enough moisture, then wash your face. When it's still damp, pat it, you know, pat it dry, but when it's still soft and damp, put on a moisturizer all over, wait for that to absorb, and then put your retinoid over your moisturizer. That moisturizer serve as a buffer to reduce irritation, but also helps to keep your skin more hydrated and you know this is a great way for those who have more dry skin and it, the moisturizer guys does not reduce the efficacy of the topical retinoid if you feel like your skin still are feeling kind of dry or taut then what you can do is create a retinoid sandwich that you may have heard a lot of us talk about cleanse put moisturizer on damp skin wait for like a minute or two put on your retinoid and then once that's fully spread out to your skin layer on top of that retinoid another layer of moisturizer so you're sandwiching your retinoid between two layers of moisturizer for additional skin barrier support, additional moisturization, but not going to affect the efficacy of your topical retinoid. The other thing you want to consider is often like the corners of our mouth, the nose area are more sensitive and often products will collect in that area, which could mean more extra flaking and irritation. So you may want to, before you put on your retinoid, protect your skin in these areas with like a petrolatum based product or with a thick moisturizer to really dull the effect or even prevent retinoids from getting to these areas before you apply your topical retinoid. So one of my favorite products is just like an ointment. So Petrolatum, CeraVe, Cetaphil, Aquaphor, they all have great ointments. And you can just put a little bit on the corners of your mouth, on the creases of your nose, even on your eye, if you are worried about product spreading to that area to reduce irritation. Okay, now let's go into some of my favorite moisturizers that I like to use with topical retinoids. For oily skin, and I think going with a cream that's oil-free so that way it's not super sticky and thick and heavy is one way. Or going with more of like a gel cream version that is slightly more creamy but still absorbs really quickly. So one is from Neutrogena, their gel cream formulation for extra dry skin. But here I recommend it for oily skin because it's more hydrating, moisturizing, but still absorbs quickly and not super heavy or sticky. Another one that I really like is from Verse. Their Skin Soak Rich Moisturizing Cream. And even though it's marketed towards dry skin, I actually find this to be a great moisturizer to use for oily skin if you live in a dry, cold environment for the winter or if you are using a topical retinoid. It has a more creamy texture but still has like a gel consistency that is very moisturizing but does not feel heavy and absorbs really quickly. But if you find that Verse Gel Cream a little bit too heavy, one I recommend is a Korean brand called April Skin. This is a squalane based gel cream cream that also contains mugwort, which is a really popular Asian skincare ingredient that has calming and soothing effects. Not as heavy and thick as the Versed. But with the squalene, I find that the lipid does contribute to adding additional oomph and moisturization. Now, another moisturizer that is oil-free that I really recommend for those with oily skin is from CeraVe, their facial moisturizing lotion. This is great because it has a, like a crossover between a light moisturizer emulsion and a gel cream. Cream. It absorbs really quickly and almost has like a slight mattifying effect. And what is really nice about this one is it also contains niacinamide in addition to ceramide. And niacinamide we know supports the skin barrier and is a lovely ingredient to pair with retinoids. It really helps to reduce irritation and support skin barrier health. For those with more combination skin or normal skin, one I really like from La Roche-Posay, their Tularian Double Facial Repair Moisturizer. This one compared to the one from CeraVe, 
is ever so slightly thicker in texture and it's hydrating, moisturizing, also contains niacinamide that's gonna be helpful, but it doesn't feel heavy or thick. Similarly, recommend checking this one out from Cetaphil, their moisturizing lotion. This one I love because it's a lightweight moisturizer. I've been using it on my face and body and it's lightweight moisturizer, but it's got avocado oil and vitamin B complex, but still doesn't feel thick and heavy. For dry skin individuals, the two moisturizers that I use all the time, especially in the winter with my topical retinoids are CeraVe Skin Renewing Cream. I mean, I've mentioned this so many times because it's just, just a good moisturizer to use with retinoids or not, especially for those with dry and mature skin. Super creamy, kind of just what I need for the winter, especially for my dry skin living in Minneapolis. This is one where I think you could just use this alone on top of your retinoid if you don't want to layer moisturizers because it's that heavy and thick. I recommend this one for all skin types, even for oily skin, if you are okay with having like a thicker moisturizer for night use. Another one that I really have been loving is from Skin Fix, Triple Lipid Restore Cream that contains ceramides, peptides, other ingredients that help to soothe the skin and repair the skin barrier. It has a similar consistency to the CeraVe, but it's not as thick and creamy, but still very hydrating and moisturizing. So for those who want a thicker cream, but really dislike the thickness of the CeraVe a Skin Renewing Moisturizer, this would be like my recommended step down that's still gonna provide adequate hydration, moisturization, skin barrier support. So one thing keep in mind that you don't want to do when using a topical retinoid is apply petrolatum based product on top of your skin where you have applied your retinoid. And similarly, you don't want to be putting your retinoid over petrolatum. So slugging is that really popular trend all over social media where you use petrolatum or petrolatum based ointment as your moisturizer over your skin. The problem is petrolatum is ultra occlusive, meaning that anything you put underneath it is gonna potentially penetrate deeper into your skin. With retinoid, it can lead to a lot of additional irritation. Similarly, because it's super occlusive, anything that you put on top of it is not gonna penetrate really well and penetrate at all. So using your retinoid on top of your petrolatum is really something that you'd want to avoid. Those are my recommended products and some tips and tricks for how you can use your topical retinoid and minimize irritation. What other retinoid questions do you have? Please comment below and I will make another subsequent video based on your comments. And again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.